Well, it's official. Horror is back in 2016. Hush stars Kate Siegel and is directed by Mike Flanagan. So guys, before I get into this review, I'm going to do some spoiler talk at the end because there's a lot of stuff that I can't tell you in the review, but I definitely want to talk about. But don't worry, I'm going to give you guys that haven't seen the movie the gist and let you know if you should see it or not. And then I'll give my rating and after that we'll talk about spoilers. So here we go. So Hush is a movie that's been on my radar. Uh, I remember watching the trailer about a month ago and I didn't even know that it came out this weekend and it wasn't playing at a theater near me, so I was like, ah, oh, great. But then I found out that it's actually playing on Netflix. So that's awesome. I went to Netflix, I watched it, and it's real quick. It's like an hour and 20 minutes, but I really, really enjoyed this movie. So in Hush, Kate Siegel plays Maddie, and the one little difference in this home invasion movie is that she is deaf and mute. She can't talk at all. So immediately she is at a disadvantage, and she is a writer, and she's working on all these various endings for her latest book. And then all of a sudden, uh, this killer comes. And he spends the rest of the movie not only trying to kill her, but toying with her, provoking her. You know, he's out to have fun, actually. He, you can tell he really enjoys this. And there's one point in the movie where she gets a hold of his weapon and she sees all these notches on it. And so he has done this in the past. Now, I will say the first, I'd say, 30 minutes it really goes through all those you know, expected beats of home invasion movies, and I started worrying a little bit, but then the first twist happens, because there's a few twists in this movie, actually. I'd say from that first twist, then it really starts getting interesting, and it definitely keeps you on your toes. You know, There's quite a few inventive plot elements in this movie that make it enjoyable. And it's directed very, very well. You can tell that Mike Madigan has really studied the craft of horror and he put a lot of thought and creativity in all the scenes in this movie, especially uh, the second, third, and on. And one thing I really love about this movie is it's really unpredictable uh, at a certain point. It, you, it keeps you guessing and there's quite a few surprises along the way. And also the character Maddie, like I said, she's deaf and that definitely plays into the outcome of this movie. You know, I think for every character that has a disability, like Daredevil, uh, there is an element of that disability that they can use to their advantage, and this movie's no different. Also, the killer in this movie, he's not dumb, which is refreshing because there's so many of these slasher movies or home invasion movies where the killers are just complete morons. And that's not the case in this one. He is a killer that considers uh, every move that he takes, and sometimes it works to his advantage and sometimes it doesn't but you can buy it. And finally, it's a lot of fun, especially in the third act. It gets really bloody, but it definitely keeps you on your toes up until the last frame. So that's gonna be the end of my spoiler free section. For a rating, I would definitely give this movie a purchase worthy. It's one of the better horror movies I've seen, especially in 2016. And that's saying a lot because we had The Witch this year. Uh, we had The Boy, which I liked quite a bit. But definitely, definitely go watch this right now. It's on Netflix. Go to Netflix, you know, cue it up, watch it. I promise you'll like it. And then come back and check out my spoiler talk because there's quite a few things I can actually discuss in this movie. So anyway, this is your spoiler warning. From here on, I'm going to talk spoilers. So you have been warned. Here we go. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is the killer and the mask. You know, at first I, I was thinking this mask is not that creative. It looks similar to the Michael Myers mask. And plus, we've seen variations of this mask in so many other home invasion and slasher movies. So it's really tough to be creative with a mask these days. And the way they were creative with this one is the killer takes off the mask within 30 minutes of the movie. And immediately I was like, oh wow, that is pretty cool. And that's not something you see often. Matter of fact, I can't think of a slasher movie that they've done that, where the killer purposely just takes off the mask and they show it in full view and he doesn't wear the mask for the rest of the movie. It's a completely different type of home invasion movie from this point on. And this is the point where I thought, okay, now we're in for a ride. And the second thing I wanna talk about is uh, when the boyfriend comes up uh, to check in on his girlfriend, Sarah. And I thought that scene was directed very intelligently because most of the time the killer is gonna go attack. I mean, he's gonna be crafty and he's gonna be tricky, but he could obviously see that he was outmatched in size and strength. So what does he do? He just waits and he waits for his opportune moment. And also, the character John, you could tell that he suspected that this guy was not a cop. 
And so he wasn't an idiot either. You know, he was just a victim of circumstance. And finally, the last thing I'd love to talk about is the way that Maddie takes on this guy. Eventually, she goes through all these scenarios in her head. This was a plot device that was established earlier in the, the movie. You know, when she was coming up with all these different endings, I believe it was seven endings for her book. And that played into the movie at the end, and I thought that was just genius. And it was her inner voice that was just telling her, hey, this won't work, and this won't work, and this won't work, so you have to kill him. But the scene before that, when we see Maddie go out the door, and then she's caught, and then the killer, you know, cracks a rock right over her skull. At first, I thought that was a pretty cool plot device, because we never see the final girl actually get killed, you know, violently. And then where do we go from there? But then that was just kind of... Um, a dream element, if you will, which usually I'm not a fan of, but I thought that that scene actually played pretty well in this movie because it was her actually going through all the escape, you know, theories in her head. So anyway, guys, that's my spoiler talk for Hush. I really enjoyed this movie, so please go check it out. And it's pretty cool to see that we're getting some good horror movies this year. And while I got you, stay tuned for my Nightmare on Elm Street Part 6 review. I'm actually editing that right now. I took a break from it so I could watch this movie and review it real quick. But that's going to be coming too in the next couple days. So anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to my channel, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd. And drum dumb out.